zone three, and I currently have in my hands a long, thick loofah. Let me show you how I did it. First off, you're probably wondering, Ashley, why did it matter that you grew a large loofah in zone three? And the reason why it matters is because my number of growing days is somewhere around 100 to 120 days. I usually have frost sometimes in June, and I normally have frost middle of September. You combo that with the fact that vine plants hate to be or de absolutely despise to be transplanted. And the fact that I was even able, able to pull that off in any capacity is an absolute miracle. This is not the first year I tried to do this. This is about year three or four, I can't quite remember, in a row of trying to make this happen and a lot of trial. All the ways that I succeeded to finally get me here so that you don't have to make the same mistakes for three, four years of your life. So number one is that cucurbits, cucumbers, loofahs, all of them need the soil to be around 15 degrees Celsius. This is why the past few years for us here in zone three, it's been very cool and slow to actually warm up, particularly when it comes to very specific microclimates, shady backyards, areas shielded with sheds in houses to actually have germinating cucumbers. The germination rates have been very, very low, in some cases non-existent. So the way that I dealt with issue number one was I actually started them obviously indoors. So I started them in the greenhouse specifically, and I've done it several different ways. So I've started them indoors and then actually staked them indoors under grow lights and then moved them into the greenhouse. I started them in the greenhouse. I've started them in paper pots. I've started them in coconut coir and peat pots. Neither one of those worked. The best way, the only way I've gotten this to actually yield something of this size anyways, was to pot it up directly inside of a container. And this one here is the Vigo self-watering container. And I actually started it inside the greenhouse right on the other side of this panel. So the plant itself was exposed to pretty much the same level of light, the same temperature, all of it from babyhood all the way up until adulthood. So I do think that that was a factor in this, the lack of transplanting, the lack of root restriction due to the pots potentially not decomposing quick enough was all negated because of this scenario that I played out here. Number two is actually that the plants themselves will not flower in the cougarbit family until they're around 25 degrees Celsius up towards 30. Any less than that, they don't flower. Any higher than that, they don't flower. So once this plant was quite well flushed out, if you watch some of my earlier videos, you know that this was taking over the greenhouse. So I needed to force it to flower because it had enough vegetative growth that it needed to go on to the next stage of life, which was flowering. So what I did is I actually would close it up inside of the greenhouse with the heater on if necessary. Meanwhile, everything else was planted outdoors despite the fact that it was only 10 degrees Celsius most days and nights, but that was enough for them. For this guy though, it wasn't. So he did stay in the greenhouse under heat, heated nights, all that sort of stuff for an extended period of time. When he did get moved outdoors, I did also cover him every night for most of June to keep those temperatures at a minimum, the 15 degrees Celsius mark, which this year was a feat unto itself solely because we had a very, very cool summer. So next up was the seeds themselves. They can take a really long time to germinate if we don't manipulate the seed coating in some way. It's an incredibly tough seed coating. So what I did is I actually took sandpaper and I roughed up the edges of the seed. I then soaked them overnight in a cup of water. And then I took those actual seeds and I put them in a damp paper towel inside of a Ziploc bag. And I put it directly on top of my seed heating mat. And I left them there until they began to germinate. Once I saw root development, I immediately moved them into their respective locations and I didn't remove them from the paper towel. I simply cut the paper towel out where that seed was located and I planted the entire paper towel in the container because I want to limit any sort of temporary pause that may happen in the plant growing process. So if you did not know, 
plants that have any sort of stress, whether it's mechanical because the roots, leaves, stems were damaged by wind, yourself, hail, heavy rain, it will put the plant into a pause position. Temperatures too high, too low, pause position. So in order to make sure that the growing process continued throughout, I try to limit the damage or the issues that could cause that as much as possible. If you watched my tour in, I think it was June or July, you would have noticed and I would have shown a leafo plant that was heavily wilted, incredibly damaged. And that actually was due to a combination of hail along with really intense wind. This decimated my little leafo plant to the point that I think in that video, I even said, she's garbage. It's another year of no loofa. But once I came out of my sulking, and I thought, how can I help get this plant back up and running? And my solution to that was to help encourage water utilization in a plant that currently was not utilizing any water because it, it was in that paused position. So what I did was I added, as you can see, an entire tomato plant. So the tomato plant was able to go in, utilize the excessive levels of water that were in the soil, and that in turn gave the lufa roots a break in a sense, particularly because this was in a self-watering container. If it was connected to like the earth in some way, which I don't think would work in this case because this actually keeps the roots warmer, but if it was, you wouldn't have to worry about this. But in a container setting where the water has nowhere to go if the plant's not using it, even if it's sunny, even if there's evapotranspiration happening, it can rot the roots and it can do enough damage that it will completely kill off the plant. So that's why I put the tomato in was to help with that utilization and hopefully turn the train around, which it did exactly that. Okay, so the other thing you're going to notice on this loofa plant specifically is that there are two other loofas, both of which are smaller in size. Now what happened with those two was incomplete pollination. And if you see this on anything, zucchinis, cucumbers, anything long like that is a sign of incomplete pollination so what i could have done or what i should have done was i should have had a little bit of plant sex in my backyard but i wasn't feeling it so i didn't do it and in all truthfulness i didn't actually pay enough attention to the plant to even remember or think it was still alive i was convinced it was dead and doing nothing turns out it was being naughty behind my back kind of ish with one flower anyways so those ones aren't going to yield a large loofah. They're going to yield the exact size you're seeing right now. And yes, they can be used for sponges if you wanted them to be. You just treat them the same way I'm going to treat that larger one. If you wanted to actually get all three of these flowers to have turned out, you would have just done the classic paint brush and or Q-tip pollination process that you do with like any sort of squash or melon. You take the male flower, you kind of move it around inside of the flower, and then you stick it in the female flower, you move it around, and you can do that repeatedly until basically the flower closes up. And then you would end up with something closer to what's above me right there. Now, my journey with this plant is not yet done. If you want the actual sponge from the lufa, you do need it to dry out and preferably dry out on the vine, but we also don't want it to get hit with frost because that would be a big no-no. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the plant on the vine. Even when it gets cold outside, you know, dips below 10 degrees Celsius at night, I'm not going to cover it. I'm going to allow that stress to happen in hopes of closing the system down faster. But if there's a threat of frost, the three of them are getting yanked off, brought indoors, and being put on a sunny windsill when they're windowsill. And when they're on that sunny windowsill, they will dry out the same as they would on the vine. Not ideal, but it will give me the desired result I'm looking for, which is some loofah sponges. And friends and family, if you're watching this, I should say family, I don't have many friends for good reason, but family, any of the sponges you get from Christmas, but family, you're getting sponges for Christmas. Surprise! Get curious yet to let me know in the comments down below if you've been on this journey with me. I know several of you have been for all three years that I've been trying to do this, and some of you were successful long before me, and I took a lot of your ideas and applied it to this to help make it work for me. So I do appreciate your guys' input because I wouldn't have been here 
this soon without some of your guys' ideas and techniques that you use. And if you have not yet gotten there, guess what? You can. I thought it was impossible. Turns out it's not. But that being said, thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye. Kane.